Hello. Hello. Hi. Who is there? Uh, my name's Leanne. Hi, Leanne. I wasn't. Oh, I want to change my name on here. Oh, so go to participants, click on okay. participants, and then you'll see you and I pop up there. Do you yeah. see that? Okay, so then. Yeah. Over yours, click on more and then oh, go down to rename. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I always have a little giggle at people who come on with their teacher name on, you know, Mrs. Yes. or whatever. Yes. Or their kids have changed it to something <laughs> random. That has happened to me. <laughs> I have that sometimes students will come on that I've never met before and it's clearly not their name up there and it's like okay I wish I knew who you were but I don't. Yeah. Okay, here, I'm gonna Where are you from right now? I'm in Penticton. Oh I nice. Teach, yeah I teach for the Merritt School District but I live in Penticton. Have you Hi, been doing distance learning for a while? Um, About four years four years now. Yeah. I see Harjeet is here, who's one of our presenters. Hello. Hi, hey. can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. And we got to chat yesterday. Yeah, I remember your face. <laughs> <laughs> so Harjeet, are you um, planning on using breakout rooms or anything? No, just uh, I barely have enough time to present everything I want to go through. So yeah. love to do it, but 45 minutes is just not enough. Yeah. 
Totally. I'm going to make you co-host right now. Excellent. There we go. I'm going to try to share my screen here. Yesterday, I, is there a way for me to see the chat on the side at the same time? Uh, you know, I always have a challenge with that um, when I'm doing my classes. If you, there is, now let's see if I can remember how to do that without actually doing it. Um, Up. Try and play around with it here. See if yeah, if you kind of, oh geez, if I share my screen for a minute, I can remember how to do it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Although I will have Grant here, we'll add Grant as a moderator as well. He can For kind sure. of respond to things in the chat as things move forward. You bet. And I will also uh, keep an eye on the chat and I can bring your attention to anything too. Oh, that, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So are you able to see my slide? Yeah, looks great. Awesome. So is there any we'll... sound connected with it or is it? No, no it? sound, nothing, okay. uh, just me. Okay, well then that's great. Hopefully that's enough of a sound bite. <laughs> oh, I think so. So Harjit, where are you talking to us from? Uh, I'm in Surrey. Oh, right. uh, I, work, yeah. I work at SAIL. And right. I also work with uh, Grant and Brad and I've been doing it for the last about two and a half years, three years now, um, building out uh, all of these digital tools that kind of go with the content mm -hmm. uh, we already have. So, you know, uh, trying to package everything together in a way that it makes it really efficient for teachers kind of to, um, to, to work with, right? Uh, that's really our objective because one of the things I learned as an, uh, I've been teaching in DL environment or online, however you want to say it, for the last 15 years. Mm. And um, what I've noticed is, uh, as we talked about it yesterday, is I spent a lot of time just managing things, whether it be emails, Moodle, or spreadsheets, you know, um, you know, chats, just it's it's all over the place. And it becomes at some point, unmanageable. So we're trying to converge all of those tools to kind of in a one place around the content and, and make it efficient for teachers to uh, to work with. I so. really, I've known about content connections for quite a while, but I really don't know. I've known about it, but I don't know much about it. So I'm lucky that I got this as one of my um, <laughs> to to moderate so that uh, I can learn about it. What do you teach, Pam? I teach languages mostly, um, mostly French online <laughs> right now. So, right. yeah, which is, I have, well, no, there are a couple courses being developed um, by, um, oh, I forget their names now, but um, not a lot available. Uh, no, not languages, but I do have some good news for you later on. So, oh, do you? <laughs> That's why you probably don't know much about us. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, exactly. Uh, we've been focusing primarily on math. Uh, yeah. Until this year, upcoming year, we'll, we'll expand into other areas. Uh, we do have an um, ambitious timeline for developing additional content in other areas. Nice. Uh, which is is one of the things on oh. the radar. Hmm. I'm very excited to hear about that. Yeah. So uh, the home, I believe, I could be wrong, is Grant. Uh, so maybe for whatever reason, whenever he logs in, it says home mm. is uh, under his name. So you might want to make him a moderator. OK. Here we go. Grant, if you're there, let us know. 
And I can also change that to say grant if we want. I, I think that would be a good idea. So okay. people know. Randy did that for us yesterday. Okay. And I have Grant's last name as Ashley. Ashley. I'll put that in there too. Perfect. Hi to everybody who's joining us. We'll get going in a couple of minutes. And is Brad going to be here as well? No, Brad won't be, unfortunately, be okay. joining us today. Okay. Uh, prior commitments, so. No problem. Oh, I see Brad or Grant, you're here in the chat. Well, if you're just waiting for us to start in the chat, maybe let us know where you are joining us from. I I always love to know where everybody is. So <laughs> he's in a better place. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, we have people from all over the place. Yeah. And if anybody's ever looking to change their name on Zoom, um, you can do that fairly easily when you join into a room. If you click on participants <coughs> and then you find your name in the list and then you hover over it and click on more and you'll see an option to rename. Um, because you can obviously you have your name that's set up in your profile, but if you know some of us want to join as different things depending on which group we're joining with, um, you might be joining with your students as uh, Madame Parenti, and then you know you're hanging out with your friends, and you might not want that. Um, so it's a nice little trick to just change your name just for the duration of that session. You can do that. So there's a little extra tip. Harjeet, are you yep. ready to go? I am ready to go. Okay, well then I will, uh, on behalf of BCEDL, welcome everybody here and thanks for joining us. Harjeet and Grant, we are all really looking forward to learning more about content connections and we're really grateful for the time you've spent preparing this and what you're about to share with us. So take it away. All right. Thank you, Pam. I uh, really appreciate um, you guys giving us an opportunity. Like every year, we've been uh, longtime partners in, in this. And, uh, you know, we always are excited to uh, be part of this every year. And uh, we're very fortunate to be part of a great group of uh, educators and innovators uh, around the province. So uh, we're just trying to do our part. So um, what I recognize about most of the people in the chat are participants that I looked on early on. Are, are our clients using our math content. So uh, they are quite familiar with what we have been providing in terms of quality. Um, so today I'm just going to walk you through not just that, but also what else is, um, you know, uh, we're gonna have available for you starting in September. So uh, let's get started. Um, as you know, we're a Canadian company focused in British Columbia here and um, now expanding into uh, Western provinces as well as uh, down South. So, uh, you know, we're continuously expanding. We just can't meet the demand. It's, it's hard to place our, our resources uh, and our first love and com uh, commitment is always a, has been to British Columbia. So we will continue to do that. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a, a presentation. So I just wanna recap that in 30 seconds. Um, you know, um, about engaging students, uh, creating a personalized learning environment. So around that, we built some tools that uh, enables you to do that in our new platform. So those of you are in old courses probably don't see these. Um, one is a scheduler. A scheduler is kind of allows you to, uh, um, you know, uh, as a teacher, when a student comes in, they are uh, automatically given a, a calendar as to what to do every day on a, a five day a week basis. Uh, and then um, as a teacher, you can obviously customize that. You can input dates that students are not supposed to be working or like a, a spring break, for example. 
uh, you can establish an end date for your course. And within those parameters, students can customize their learning. They say maybe they want to work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Um, so it out outputs a personalized calendar that they can kind of use as a blueprint for completing the course. Uh, along with that, we have created formative assessments that allows us to analyze not only us, but the students as well, to see um, which aspects of the content did they uh, understand well or didn't understand well, right? And that is presented in a form of analytics. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through the whole presentation from yesterday. So if you're interested in more on that, that's been recorded, it'll be uploaded. You can watch that in detail. And all of these uh, aspects, um, you know, inform our communication and communication can be personalized or it can be automated and personalized. So meaning you can set up parameters where you don't have to go in and daily send emails for a student who has, for example, fallen behind their schedule or a student um, who just came in, you wanna send them a welcome email. The system takes care of those communication components uh, and takes it off your plate essentially. You just have to set it up and it's very easy to do that. So those are a collection of tools that uh, we talked about yesterday. And today we're just gonna look at, focus on the courses, the content, um, as our company name suggests, right? So some of the course features I think worth emphasizing is our lessons are really interactive and I'll try to highlight that as I go through this presentation. Uh, they're not uh, passively watching uh, videos, you know, uh, you typically do. Uh, with uh, a lot of the other content out there perhaps, right? So students are constantly asked to uh, interact with the content. And again, we'll touch on that shortly. Uh, the other, something new that's in our um, uh, courses will be inquiry projects. So all of our math courses, science and English courses will have inquiry project. Um, random access database. Now, many of you have been enjoying that in our math courses uh, in our partnership with WCLN. Uh, and that partnership will continue. It will just look different. And it's for technical reasons than anything other, you know, other than that um, is, is simply not the case. Um, so the random access database from our side for math alone, uh, we have created a, a database of 10,000 questions for our math courses. So that will be brand new, nothing old in there from scratch. Um, our learning repository is something new. So it allows you to really customize your courses, uh, alter courses to your liking. Uh, if you have an adapted math aid versus a regular math aid, you want to look, feel different in terms of content, in terms of formative assessment, in terms of summative assessment. And I'll walk you through it if time permitting on that. Um, and then uh, customizable lessons and practice questions, as, as I just mentioned. So you can customize a lesson to your liking. And you can also create your own content within our platform. Um, complete solution videos with uh, every question, every formative assessment. So, you know, initial part is, you know, we take care of that for you. If a student still struggles with the content, they can reach out to you, obviously. But uh, in most part, my experience has been students watch a solution video after they've attempted the formative question after the lesson and you know they kind of figure it out in most part. And sometimes I still need to engage and, and provide that support. So it cuts down the amount of support you need to provide your students. Uh, extra, no external resources in any of our courses, whether you're looking at language courses, whether you're looking at science courses or math courses or any other upcoming courses in the future. One of the focuses we made is we don't wanna rely on and depend on external resources and managing textbooks, sending signing them out or sending them out depending on where you are is a big challenge and, and consumption of resources at your school level, right? Uh, responsive design, all of our uh, content works, you know, on any platform, um, you know, whether it, it is, you know, a iPad, whether it's a phone or whether it's a desktop version. Uh, Cross-platform, um, again, same sort of thing. Doesn't matter which learning management you're working with, it will uh, work seamlessly with that. And finally, our content is all HTML5 compliant, uh, meaning all of our content has been converted or migrated over to HTML5. Uh, unless you're using old courses with WCLN, 
uh, those may not be the, that might not be the case, but obviously we're phasing those out and I'll explain that to you a bit later on. So for course offerings, as I said, uh, we are expanding and these are the new courses uh, that I've outlined and, and an asterisk there um, that will be available August of 2021 for you to download and use. Um, the same way you're using math courses. In the past, we've had situations where, you know, you had to buy the physics licenses separate from math. Moving forward, you don't have to worry about it. You buy licenses, you can use it with any course. In fact, if you're doing a course in physics, you can import some practice uh, lessons uh, from math that you may need, like you want to review some math concepts like scientific notation for physics 11 course, perhaps. Uh, you can import our math lessons right into your physics course. So that, that easy transition from one course to the other without having to migrate content in the LMS, we make it very seamless for you. Uh, we'll walk you through that. Uh, sorry, I, I can't see the chat. So uh, if there is something there, I'm assuming Grant will look after it. If not, um, I'll try to address it at the end of the presentation. Uh, future plans. Uh, moving forward, um, you know, for 2022, we're looking to add to our list. We're going to add some humanity courses without saying which ones, uh, language courses, um, you know, the main languages. Uh, so, uh, and then other electives, uh, fine arts electives like drama, theater uh, are some of the things we are, um, that's on our radar, right? So these are uh, forthcoming for 20, uh, September 2022 or August 2022 uh, year. As far as our lab development, uh, lab, those of you who don't know, is a learning analytics platform we just spoke of. We called it lab in short. Um, there, we're building additional engagement tools right in the system. So you don't have to, again, go and use something out there, um, you know, it's all centralized, easy for you to manage, easy for students to manage. Whenever you have 10 different things, 10 different places you have to go to, it's challenging for you and it's challenging for the user. They don't know what to do where, right? So we're trying to really converge uh, different tools into one platform. Okay? Uh, finally, we'll be building a grade book, uh, a grade book, you'll still be able to use the gradebook in your LMS. You'll have a choice. You can turn on our gradebook or use the one in the LMS. So there's a flexibility there. And the reason we're producing a gradebook is twofold. One, um, we have a separate platform for bricks and mortar schools, should they wish to use our content without the need to uh, set up a learning management system or that tech component. We made it very seamless for, uh, for our, our, our friends in bricks and mortar to use our content. Uh, so there's no technical expertise required at their end. It's all taken care of within our platform. Uh, the other is the grade book. Uh, we, we are looking to look at, you know, we're developing a grade book that focuses on two things. One is the, the, the traditional grade book where you, you, know, you give them tests, assignments, and then you know, um, you, you get a, a grade at the end, right? Whether it be a letter grade or a percentage based on some sort of scale. But uh, there has been a trend towards, um, you know, reporting based on learning competencies. So we're gonna make a grade book that you can toggle between learning competency view to, uh, you know, a traditional grade book. So you'll be able to use either one without having to create um, a lot of work for yourself the system will take care of it. So that's a feature that uh, will be available in 2022 as well. Now, course features. Uh, what we've really focused on is, I always say, you want the simplicity of, uh, you know, a Google and, uh, and the complexity and smartness of Google as well, right? When you're building something. So we've adopted those principles and are designing our platform we really make it really a minimalistic view, uh, uh, you know, in terms of our dashboard, but there's a lot of information here, right? It tells you where the student is, how much they've completed, how many days they have remaining, what's due tomorrow, the important key metrics that are needed day to day for a student to engage in learning, right? Just, you know, creating that structure for them, right? That often lacks in uh, an asynchronous or synchronous environment. Uh, the other thing we've done is, um, you know, a lot of times you get questions 
uh, around maybe there's a technical issue or there's this minor error in the content and teachers having to deal with that. We wanna take that off your plate. So what we've done is uh, on the right-hand side, when you click on the little icon on the top, um, you have a support. So a student can simply click on support and submit the error directly to us and we correct it. The nice thing is when we correct it, we correct it for everyone, right? So it's, uh, it's a multiplier effect, right? Uh, rather than you go and doing it for just for your course. So even as a teacher, you can do that. It's very easy. Um, you can take a snippet. There's a little camera here that allows you to take a screenshot of our platform, send it to us. That's all we need. We can track it from there, the course. We can track down the lesson. We can track down the unit. We can track down the page from just from your screenshot. Uh, so that's very helpful. Um, the other things um, around our, uh, when you're watching a lesson, again, we've really cleaned up uh, in terms of our uh, look and feel here. Uh, as you can see, our lesson is very clean. If there are no distractions, student can focus on the content, right? The content as aspect of, of, of the lesson. Um, now, navigation. There are two ways to navigate our content. One is on the bottom right where it says slide six of 12. If you click on that, you'll be able to see and jump from one slide to another very quickly. And you also notice that there's a green bar uh, over all of these slides. What that tells you is the amount of slide watched by the learner, right? Did they actually watch it? They can't simply scrub through it. If they scrub through it, it won't register. So we built in mechanism to, to circumvent, um, you know, display of engagement, right? Uh, so the students have to and must watch every page to, to register uh, as being watched. There's some way around it. Uh, so if, it, if the bar is partially green, that means they watch partially, partial, uh, they partially watch that particular lesson. Now, the other thing we talked about earlier is about our lessons being um, interactive, right? So one of the things we've done is you're not, we've broken it down to slides. And within those slides, it's not simply watching somebody do something. That's a component of teaching. Uh, we minimize that. But within that, we've also uh, strategically, and the subject matter expert decides that, uh, where to place these you know, strategic questions where a student kind of gets engaged, right? So in this case, here's a question, you know, you've introduced an example and then a student is expected to try one, right? The slides are not gonna move forward. They have to do it. So you can't just turn it on and walk away and come back and say, I've finished the lesson. So, you know, uh, students are encouraged to engage in a various way. This is just one of them, right? Where a student does the question, they can look at the answer. If they didn't get the right answer, they can watch a solution video, for example, right? Uh, so really focusing on engaging and uh, incorporating formative assessment within the lesson. The, the typical thing we do in a classroom is when we're teaching is we're questioning our students, right? And we wanted to mimic that in an online environment, you know, a students being asked some questions as they work through the learning component. I think that's really important. It's not like what happens in a classroom, but this is as close as we can come. Uh, the other thing we built into our courses are our games. Uh, again, these games are built with the mindset of the appropriateness. We only build games where we feel it is appropriate. So, you know, we're trying to um, put those in where it is, uh, we find there's the greatest value to this. So for example, here, you know, uh, at a grade eight level, this is a course that is being currently being developed and will be ready for, um, for August is we want students to know just basic addition and subtraction facts. You know, um, you know, it's pretty boring if I give them a worksheet of 50 questions, we made it into a game. We're accomplishing the same thing. So um, appropriately placed uh, gamification of, of the content. The other thing you'll recognize about our content is you can open up a whiteboard beside any of our content by clicking on this pencil on the left-hand side, right below the calendar. And what that does is uh, opens up a whiteboard on the side. You can make notes, comments, whatever you like. You can flag the slides as a, as a user. Um, you can print the slides. 
So this is your learning inventory. As you're going through this, you are going through certain things and rather than keeping track of it somewhere else, keep it in the system. Uh, it's twofold. If you flag it, it, the flag part shows up at the teacher end. The teacher can go in and respond right on the slide. So all of the, the, the learning, uh, what do we call it, portfolio of learning is being held within, within the course and an appropriate location, right? So that conversation can take place. Um, as opposed to being outside somewhere, you know, somebody's cutting and pasting this in the email, you you having to go look at it in the lesson and then, you know, responding, it becomes very time consuming. So we've limited that. The other thing you'll notice here is at the top left-hand corner is few icons. One is uh, analytics icon. We discussed that yesterday. Is this play button? Doesn't matter where you are on the lesson. You've navigated away somewhere, whether it's email, whether it's calculator, whether it's analytics page or a dashboard, you click on that, it will take you back to where you were last. So rather than having to go through many clicks, right? Uh, at the top, one of, the, one of the other things we've added is navigation here. So this isn't just breadcrumbs. When you click on it, they're actually navigation. So they like drop down menus. You can choose a different lesson. You can choose a different page. You can actually jump from one course to another. So there's a lot of built-in functionality. Everything here comes with a purpose. Now, when you're working through assessments, same sort of thing, you have a whiteboard, you can work through each problem, each problem, uh, the, the work will be saved on the side. So um, again, you don't really need to go somewhere else. Again, this is all formative assessment. You can work with the whiteboard separately, or you can work with a whiteboard. And we have embedded Desmos ca graphing calculator uh, as part of our tools. So you can work with that. And that's something that you can move around as you wish. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the assessment tools. Uh, so that, that's a, a brief summary of our content, uh, how it looks and feels in our new platform. Uh, the assessments, what we have done is we've recognized, and from my experience as well, is when I'm in an LMS, I have a course and I have a whole bunch of assessments, a database a database that is not really connected to my lessons. So I have to fish around to see appropriate questions for my lesson. And if I'm teaching a course and I wanna import something from another course, I can import a lesson. And then I have to import a, a test bank. In case of Moodle, when you import a test bank, you end up pretty much importing the entire test bank from the other course. Now your course is very large, slow, and not well organized, right? So there's no, uh, it, the organization structure breaks down in LMSs that I worked with. Um, what we have done is, we, and this is the reason why we, we've developed assessments outside, this is one of the reasons, is we've attached our lessons, uh, our, our question database to the lesson. So wherever the lesson goes, our assessment bank kind of that for that lesson travels with it without you having to do anything. It's available. You just need to go in and, and and use it as you please, right? And then our assessment is organized into four levels of difficulty. Think of it that way, level one, level two, level three, level four. And that's kind of aligned with, you can say, you know, emerging, developing, proficient, and exceeding kind of four levels of questions, right? One, two, three, four. And then within those levels, we've created different types of questions. So type one, type two, type three, and then type one, you might have 10 questions. So when you're randomly selecting a type one question, every student is getting a different question. So we've really created a, a structure around our assessments. And hopefully that will help you and serve you well as we move through this. The beauty of our lesson, uh, our assessments is you can have questions in any format video, text, audio, and image. And as far as rendering these questions, and, and I've come across this quite a bit with uh, Moodle personally, so I can only speak to Moodle experience because I use Moodle day to day, um, is you know sometimes characters um, with upgrades don't show up, other things happen. So rendering is a, a very problematic sometimes, right? It creates issues for teachers, stress for teachers, students, and um, tech staff, right, having to deal with it. What we have done is when we render the question to the student, it actually gets converted to an image. And image is a very versatile 
uh, to work with. Uh, there is no issues with <laughs> rendering images anywhere, right? So uh, you're not going to have an issue with uh, X to the power of two showing up as X two, right? Uh, so that's how we've kind of worked around that. And you can have videos embedded if you want them to analyze some clip before they respond to a question or an, uh, listen to an audio file respond to a question. Those are made very convenient for you. So here's a, a typical way we create a quiz, just to give you an idea. Again, I've, I've skipped a lot of things just to focus on just the core here. Uh, when you go in and uh, you're looking to create a quiz, all you do is um, uh, you say create a new quiz, window opens up, you give it a title and the visibility. This is a nice, another feature of a repository. You can keep it private, meaning this assessment is yours. You can make it, uh, share it at your institutional level. So at your school level, or you can make it public, right? Uh, you can share, when I say public, not to the students, but to the other uh, teachers, uh, administrators in, uh, that are on the system can utilize your assist assessment as well. So we're, we're trying to care, create the spirit of sharing so we don't end up all having to create the same thing several times. When somebody else has created, for example, a test on uh, transformations in, in pre-calculus 12, well, maybe you, that could be your basis for building yours, right? You may not want to use it exactly, but it's a nice way for somebody to share. And I'll show you how you can access that okay? uh, a bit later on. It's very easy you know, with our learning repository. But anyway, that's that part. Description, uh, general feedback. Um, you'll notice this theme throughout uh, the feedback. We also provide a math editor and a science editor. Uh, that's important for uh, those that teach math and science. Uh, you can also give an audio and a video feedback if you wish to. And I'll show you that again later on on the, those two aspects. Uh, timing, grading, layout, uh, you know, password protection, shuffling the questions, shuffling the answers, number of attempts, you know, typical features you see in other LMSs, one form or another are present in our assessment tool. Uh, when you have an exam, uh, you'll notice that there's a maximum grade. The beauty of creating an exam in our system is, You'll recognize in other LMSs, uh, especially again in Moodle, once that exam has been administered to students, it's impossible to change. If I wanna change it from 15 questions to 20 questions, I essentially have to close that test, create another one, transfer marks over, all sorts of things I have to do to make that happen or just create a new course. Um, with our system, you can add and subtract questions. You can edit questions on the go without having to worry about uh, all of those issues. Um, the maximum grade is the metric we use. Everything gets scaled to the maximum grade. So the maximum grade could equal to the raw score, or you can say everything equals 100 or 50 or 30. So that is, if you make it from 15 question, 20 question, it, if you make the maximum grade to be 30, it's always gonna be scaled to 30, right? And when it's reported in the grade book. So, at the bottom, you can see you can add new questions, add a random questions, add questions, add single questions, or edit question bank if you wish, if you want to add additional things to your database. When you add things to a question bank, again, they're add, you're adding things to your database, not ours or anyone else's. So you can do that freely. And, and you know, the idea is not to, you know, uh, impose things on you to use everything we create, but give you the ability to create and customize things that you want to do. Right. Um, further to adding questions, uh, you can add various types of questions. Here's a multiple choice. Um, you can assign the marks question. You can give a general feedback on the question. Now on an answer, you can type out an answer and then right below the answer, you can give a specific feedback. Now you'll see that it says grade is 100. You can actually give a grade of a partial marks for getting a specific answer out of the multiple choices. It doesn't always have to be right or wrong, right? Uh, black and white. You can sometimes, especially, uh, you know, uh, individual may get a particular response or an answer because they missed a, a specific step and you don't want to give them zero. Maybe you want to give them 50% or 75% on it. You have the capacity to do that and you can provide that in the feedback. Now, in terms of choosing questions, you can choose questions from any of our databases, right? 
we have all of our database. You can choose a question from pre-calculus 12 to math eight. You can jump around and back and forth between any, any uh, database, uh, any course that you wish to. Uh, so it's organized by course and by topic. And uh, you can duplicate, you can view all those mini features that are available. You can you know, add random questions. You can say you choose five from this unit, this lesson, this level, and this type. Um, you may be teaching physics and you wanna draw some questions again out of physics uh, math 11 maybe as a review. You can do that without having need to import export questions uh, or locate questions, um, you know, uh, through a large database, uh, you know, in a learning management system. Rendering, very uh, simple and straightforward. This is what a student sees when they're writing a test. They see questions, they can flag questions. Um, as they work through, they are highlighted in different color, time remaining and submit button. And then you can add things like a formula sheet or database uh, booklet or reading booklet. All of those things sh will show up here. Uh, so the students can um, you know, easily access those things. As far as uh, marking, when it shows up at your dashboard, you can uh, you know, assign marks, give them feedback as you wish, and you can notify the student once you have completed the grading. So it's, it's intended to uh, be very uh, convenient. Um, the other part is rubrics. So assignments, uh, one of the things we've done is we've uh, allowed you to create rubrics. Again, you can share these, uh, the visibility, you can make it public, private, and, or uh, share it at an institutional level. You can create different levels, different criterions, uh, or you can use an existing rubric that you have created or that's available uh, from uh, our repository that we've created or the ones that the public has shared. Um, you can create new and save. Um, it's up to you. So there's a great deal of flexibility to create, share, and uh, use uh, rubrics without having to do a lot of work yourself. And then text submissions, right? You can, you can type out, let's say an essay right here, it will render at, at our end. You can record an audio video again, and you have the math and the science tools available throughout. Or you can simply drop a file. Nice thing about our file is, uh, one of the things we need to do constantly is in Moodle is how oh, it has to be converted to PDF, take pictures, here's uh, how you can make a PDF document. Well, we've removed all of those aspects for you uh, when you're using our, our um, assignment tools, right? Um, all you have to do is submit a file. It could be a Word file, it could be a PDF file or some other JPEGs, it doesn't matter. Our system converts it to a PDF format for you to use. Uh, so this is what it looks like when it's rendered. Uh, this bar right here, you can kind of change the width of the two pages as you please. So there's some flexibility, you know, you can make one, one panel bigger than the other and so on as needed. You can add comments, you can highlight things as you will see on the next slide. You can, uh, you know, use a pencil to mark things and text boxes to add text around the document. Now you'll notice that when they submit a document, you'll see both views. You'll see a, a, a submission format. In this case, it was submitted as a docx file, but the converted file. Sometimes let's say you say, oh, you know what? I, I think I submitted everything for whatever reason. You always have the original file. You can always look at and compare if you needed to uh, at your disposal. Um, so here's the one that's highlighted with a comment. So it's intended to make your life a lot easier and you can zoom in and out, make it larger and smaller as you please. You can also um, drop a file here uh, in terms of your feedback. Again, you can also record audio or video feedback and you'll see that shortly how to do that. And we made that very easy. So you don't need additional plugins or other tools to, to accomplish that. So here's our recording tool. So as soon as you hit a, a video, icon uh, on this slide, um, if I may move over my, so when you click on this video icon, um, you'll end up on this page and you say start recording and you'll see your recording and you'll be able to submit that. Uh, stop recording, uh, this is audio. So you're recording an audio file the same way and then you can review it of course and re-record or you can attach the file. You're done.
So it's, it's intended to bring another element to communication rather than being always being text. What about using audio and video as a ways to communicate with our students when we are doing, whether it's formative or summative assessment? So we wanna make that easy enough for you to use it, not record it somewhere else, save it and download it. And it's, it becomes very time consuming. So we're trying to take all those things out of, out of the equation for you. Then, We've, as I said, we've incorporated uh, math types that allows you to you know, type out the different math characters, or you can just use a stylus, very convenient, right? To, uh, and it converts it to uh, a, a appropriate um, text. Now the other part, I'm just gonna look at the time. We have about 10, 15 minutes, about 10 minutes. Course Builder. Now this is a tool that I will touch on uh, later on this afternoon as well, but I'll give you a preview of it. Uh, that'll be a live demo. This is more of a, um, you know, a, a static presentation. One thing you can do is by clicking on the course uh, explorer at the top left, we call it course explorer, you can call it a dashboard, is you can see all your courses here, you can create new courses. That's what I'm going to show you in the afternoon, how to create a course in three minutes. That's our goal. Okay. So, um, but however, here, what I'm going to show is how to edit a course. So you just click on the three dots on the top uh, and then just click on modify course. It brings you to this page. On this page, you will recognize that we have um, two windows. One is your course, one is a search content library. So this is our uh, repository of, uh, of, of learning objects for everything. Uh, you can look at math, science, whatever is available. You can search by course, you can search by unit, or you can search by lesson. Uh, so there are various uh, ways of searching and there's a significant number of filters to really quickly drill down to what you're looking for. So in this case, I, all I have to do is if I wanna move some content from Math 11 as a review into Math 12, it just grab, for example, the, the what do we call it? Put a star here. Um, and then just grab it over and move it over. That's it, it's there. You've moved the entire unit over, it's that easy. And once you've done that, uh, you need to reflect that in the LMS. And you know, I, I'll, I'll show you that later on as well. Now, uh, you can also move over rather than the entire unit, you can go to a, a, open up a lesson and grab things and move them over to a lesson and you can place it wherever you like. Uh, we've uh, color coordinated different things. So lessons are, you know, blue, um, projects are uh, this other color, and then uh, reviews are in green. So you can easily see what type of task you have here. So again, everything is done with a uh, intention. It isn't just by accident that we're putting certain colors with uh, in certain places. Um, next thing, you can even go to a uh, click on a lesson. So you can click on any of the lessons or you can preview the lessons before you add. Uh, you can go down to a page level. So you can grab a page from one of the lessons in pre-calculus and move it over to your course as you wish, for example, here, right? In the same way you can move the unit. And then same thing with self-check, the assessment, the formative assessment component. You can move them over. And then the formative assessments can be attached to um, learning standards as well, if you wish to do so. We have, we have uh, built that in here as well. Uh, next. Now, the other feature we allow our teachers to do is hide and show. So it's very easy, this little eyeball. Um, when you click on it, you can hide the entire unit or you can hide the entire lesson or you can entire individual pages to customize your lesson. It's, it, you don't need to do anything else. That's it, it's gone, done. Uh, and you can make it visible again if you wish later on. Now, if you happen to delete a lesson by accident, it's not a big deal. Nothing happens. You just need to bring over the new lesson and uh, put in a new link in your LMS for that new lesson. So it's easy to um, you know, reconnect or if you messed up on the lesson, you want the original, you can grab it from our content library and use it as you wish. Now we talked about advanced filters. So you can uh, search by a subject, Grades, activities, types of activities. Maybe you're looking for a project. Maybe you're looking for a rubric, and um, sources. Right? Uh, you want to search just content connections, things in your institution, or you know, uh, in uh, public domain. Right? Public domain meaning within the system. Of course, when I say public domain, uh, there's nothing 
can be accessed publicly without having login credentials of a teacher to all of this. That's a minimum required. Now, in terms of creating your own content, we wanted to make it very easy for you. So all you do is create slides. There it is. You put in the information. Uh, you make the visibility. You want this available to just to yourself, or you want it available to um, uh, everyone in your class. Okay. Grade level math. And then tags are really important. I think this is really important if you want to share things with others to put in tags so your um, uh, object can easily be accessed by people um, you know, that wish to uh, look for something that you have created. So if you have a file, audio or video file, just drop it in there. Bingo, save, done. It's that simple. Now, you may want to create an HTML page you know, more of a, you know, a what sometimes we see, uh, you know, at WCL and courses, they have those beautiful uh, text and then some videos embedded in it. Well, you can create those here yourself. You can embed anything in here. You can embed um, video, you can embed images um, and personalize your instructional page as you wish, right? So that is available at your disposal as well. And then, you know, sometimes you find this little box a little too small, you can click on the, uh, the four uh, arrows there and it expands it. So it's a little easier to work with. All right, I have um, covered pretty much everything I wanted or intended to cover in this presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, as I said, uh, these courses the, uh, on the new platform will be available in August. Those of you who are in the old courses, um, we are gonna encourage you to move over because those old courses uh, a year from August uh, will not function. So it is really important that you make that switch and our support team is on a standby to help you uh, facilitate this process. So we wanna make it as easy as possible. We already have many schools moved over, but there are a few that still remain outstanding. Um, please reach out to us and so we can uh, start that process um, you know, as soon as possible, right? And we will provide professional development around this uh, in uh, August and September. So we'll have sessions where you can learn about these tools a little more depth um, on an ongoing basis. I know there's a lot to, lot to comprehend. In fact, I have three pages of functionality on our platform and uh, we just uh, don't have time to cover all of those. So, all right, thanks, Pam. Wow, Harjit, that was amazing. So much information. And I know. <laughs> it's it a great overview of what is available and what we can do. Um, Bev has a question. I was wondering, Bev, if you just wanted to turn on your mic and, and ask. Sure. Sure, I can do that. Um, I'm just wondering if we're using um, content connections or a course within a learning management system, would we also have to create users in, in the LAP to build, use the built-in assessment or how would that work if we're using LTI lessons? Well, that's an excellent question, Beth. Uh, you don't need to add students or uh, to our system. Uh, everything happens through the LTI. So you would add your students as you're doing right now uh, with, uh, with your courses, whether it be Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, or D2L. And all it does is when you student or individuals click on a, on a link, it, it takes them to our platform. And then from that, we extract student information, right? Student name, student email address, right? So our system is able to, you know, obtain that and all of that information necessary for us to function from, from, from your uh, learning management system. Uh, you don't need to do anything different than what you're doing. In fact, the grades can be pushed back to your grade book in Canvas or other learning management systems. You don't have to worry about configuring that aspect of it as well. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I have a question, Harjit. Sure. Yeah, you and I talked earlier this year, I don't know if you remember about uh, creating language courses and content connections. And I was wondering, so when you 
um, when you have teachers create courses from scratch, do you sometimes have them work as a team or is it just one person creating the whole course and then how does this work? Okay, our philosophy around building courses, one of the things we recognize about courses that are out there is, is, it, is this approach to piecemeal work, right? Meaning yeah. somebody builds this unit, another one builds this unit, and we bring it together as a course. Um, obviously, uh, there are logistical challenges around that for people that do that. But I think it creates um, um, gaps or in the flow of the course. Uh, we always believe one subject matter expert dedicated to building the content. And then we have other people that review the content. And then we have uh, designers and uh, animators that animate the content. So we have a full team that take care of the, the, the content development component. It isn't just one person. And I think that's the biggest problem with you know, public uh, system is we ask teachers to do everything. We can be great subject matter experts, but we're not course designers. There's a reason why people do masters in you know, course design, right? Uh, if it was as easy as a, uh, we might think it is, uh, then everyone would be doing it. I would be doing it. I'm not a course designer, so I, I, I stay away from it. So, good question. Right, thanks for your answer. Anyone else? If I may, I'll ask just a quick other question. I know you said you said that you um, well, in the chat box. Um, I think Grant said that uh, YouTube videos cannot be embedded. So I know in, in the language courses that I do develop at um, Abbott Virtual School, um, I do use YouTube videos just simply because I don't have the time to create all these videos, and some of them are super well made. But I always make sure that uh, they're from YouTube channels. They're you know. Um, uh, professionally done and that have a lot of views so they're very likely to stay because otherwise I know that the links can get broken so is that you do not make any exceptions for that uh, we when you're creating your own content obviously you can add embed any video as a link or as a video as a, as a file but we as a policy ourselves we don't embed YouTube videos in our content and that's obvious reasons right uh, one is copyright we are a commercial product uh, second is um, this very issue of a link going down, uh, having people on a panic, right? Having to find a substitute. Um, the other thing I might touch on the earlier question you asked, sorry. So the, to answer that question, yes, you can embed things in your own content. You can modify your course as you please. You wanna add YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, or your own videos. You can do all of those things, but we don't do that. We give you the tools to okay. do that if you wish to. That answers um, my question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Well, Harjeet, I'm going to ask you. You said about language courses, and I saw that you had that as a uh, as a possibility for 2022. Um, is that like uh, is that happening, or is that just kind of what? some some ideas that you're having you tell us more <laughs> no it's it's not it's more than ideas uh we are building language courses uh we are developing three different language courses when i say three different three different types of language courses french spanish and punjabi are the first three that we will have uh, have available from 8 to 12 for uh, september of 22, right? 2022. So those, those are happening. I, I just didn't want to say which courses, but now you asked, I, I don't mind sharing. Well, we've, uh, we've engaged in that process yeah. and we're excited about it. We have, and one, the, one of the other things is our, our subject matter experts are teachers from British Columbia. They actually work in the system, whether it be in a classroom or an online environment. So they fully understand what the needs are of the teachers. They are not university graduates or otherwise. Uh, we really wanna make sure when we vet our subject matter experts um, to, um, uh, to be the highest caliber. And uh, Florence, I, I tried to recruit Florence. She's an amazing uh, language teacher. I, I still, uh, my offer always stands to her, so. <laughs> 
Well, we are waiting with anticipation for those courses for sure. And uh, still interested, oh. <laughs> still no. considering, just too busy at the moment. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I, I will continue to bother you. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, well. Harjeet, it's so great. Thank you so much for uh, presenting for us. And Grant, it's lovely to be able to have somebody else managing the chat and answering all the questions that come through there. Thank uh, you. So I uh, hope to see all of you in more sessions today and then at the demo slam and also in Kumo space if you haven't tried it out yet. I just love it. I think it's a lot of fun in there. You gotta try that. I haven't yet, to be honest. Oh, check it out. It's one thing I yeah. haven't tried. So busy listening to all the presentations. I it's, know. It's, it's amazing work going around here. I mean, yes. a lot of great stuff. You know, I only tried it when we tried it before we, uh, you know, a couple of days ago when we were prepping uh, for the conference and I haven't had a chance to go in during the conference time. So I'm hoping to pop in at some point. Yeah. Um, so thank you, everybody. And I'm going to uh, stop our session here in just a minute so that I can start the next one and get those presenters ready. Thanks, Pam. Thank, thank you, everyone. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. I want to ask you one other quick question. Oh, are you gone? <laughs>